Hi, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy with the next Rhythm Chalk Talk. Remember, Chalk Talks assume you know the basics. What I'm trying to do is get you used to reading more difficult tracings. You can also log on to ecgacademy.com to watch a whole series of videos from basic to advanced. Let me help you become an ECG expert. It's easy. And stay tuned for more Chalk Talks every week. Anyway, this, uh, this rhythm strip is something that I found on the telemetry unit, and it's a very common strip. It's a common arrhythmia, but, uh, so, I, so I listed it as basic, but it doesn't exactly look like the typical textbook picture of this particular arrhythmia, so that's why I thought it would be fun to go through it step by step and teach you how to recognize this arrhythmia while you're, uh, uh, when you're looking at strips on the units. Anyway... Let's look at the forest first. Uh, you see the QRSs kind of marching through, and they look pretty regular. Um, let's grab our calipers and uh, take a look and see um, whether they are indeed regular. So put them down. I happen to have them at the right rate. And uh, the QRSs certainly do appear to be very regular. So hmm, that's kind of interesting. What's the rate there? If we count uh, heavy boxes, 300, 150, 175, 60, it's between 60 and 75 beats per minute, so we'll call it, call it 68. Well, that's fine. So we have a regular rhythm at 68 beats per minute, and now, of course, what should we do is look for uh, atrial activity. What's the atrium doing? Of course, the best place to look for P waves is in front of the QRS complex. And if you look in front of this QRS, there's a bump right here that kind of looks a little like a P wave. Um, let's look at the next QRS complex, and it seems like there's the same signal there. In fact, there's a, there's a bump in front of every QRS complex. But if this was a P wave and you were to measure the PR interval, it would seem to be somewhat short. Um, perhaps 120 milliseconds or so. Well, what's the normal PR interval? The normal PR should be 0.12 to 0.2 seconds, or as electrophysiologists like to think in terms of milliseconds, 120 to 200 milliseconds. Um, or for beginners, it's basically uh, anywhere from three to five small boxes. And that would be the normal PR interval. This really does look short, doesn't it? It's almost like two and a half small boxes, really. Not, it doesn't quite make three. So you'd have to call this sinus rhythm with a short PR interval. But when you think of short PR intervals, oh, well, there are a couple of syndromes that come in mind, like WPW syndrome, where you, instead of having a, a PR segment that's fairly flat, what you have instead is a delta wave, uh, which is a slurred upstroke of the QRS complex, and a very short PR, but that's not really what we're seeing here. We're seeing just a short PR interval, but here's the trick. You really shouldn't just look at this. You really have to look at the whole thing. Because if you kind of glance at the baseline between these QRS complexes, um, there's a hint here. Because in front of this little bump here that you think is a P wave, there's a flat segment. But it's not exactly flat, is it? It's kind of slanted. It has a slope to it. So when you think about slopey things, um, what you need to think about are sawtooth waves. What does a sawtooth wave tell you? Atrial flutter. Now, how do you know it's atrial flutter? Well, if you look really closely, behind this bump, there's actually another bump that looks just like it, right there. And if I take out my teeny weeny calipers um, and bring them on over, um, you can see that, uh, well, the, my, my marks got in the way of that one. Let's measure these over here. Uh, you have these two. Uh, which um, are a little bit slower than 300 beats per minute, probably about 275 beats per minute. And then if you measure on over, you see that there's actually a bump on the, uh, the, the, the very beginning portion of the T wave. And so if you put your caliper lines on that, then you're reading the end of the T wave. And if you measure out after that, you see the next um, bump here, which is a flutter wave, occurs on time. All right, so when you're dealing about thinking about flutter waves, uh, we're seeing one, we're seeing two, 
and there's one buried in the beginning uh, of the T wave, and there's one buried at the end of the T wave. So I, you, you have to consider this four flutter waves for every QRS complex, and it just keeps repeating over and over again. So um, you could call this atrial flutter with four to one conduction. I don't like to use the word block. Um, the word block implies that there's really something wrong with the AV node. And uh, realize that the AV node is supposed to keep all of the atrial signals from the ventricles because if you had an atrial rate of 275 beats per minute and the AV node conducted every single one, you'd have a ventricular rate of 275, which could kill a person. So your AV node kind of acts like a filter, and it and it keeps all the atrial signals, very rapid ones, from reaching the ventricle. Well, in a normal person, perhaps in the middle of the night while they're sleeping, you could easily have atrial flutter conducting uh, here at 68 beats per minute. Think of 68 is about 70. 70 times 4 is 280. And that's kind of where we thought our atrial rate was, about 275 beats per minute. So if the atrial rate's 275, one quarter of that runs out to be about 68 beats per minute, which was kind of where we thought the ventricular rate was. So it all adds up. You've got atrial flutter with four to one conduction. Some people would just call this a moderate ventricular response. But these flutter waves are a little bit tougher to see. Uh, it's fairly basic. Most people should be able to pick those up. But two of them got hidden by the T wave, and that's why I thought this strip was a little bit more challenging than the ones you'd normally see. So that's Rhythm Chalk Talk number five. I hope that helped. Remember to log on to ecgacademy.com so you too can become an ECG expert. And thanks for watching.